on YouTube and I'm getting ready to get it started here on Facebook. I'm a bit nervous. You know, this is definitely going to be a very emotional show. Um, I was watching a video earlier today where an elderly woman, she was pretty much jumped by some um, teenagers, you know, and they jumped her and they beat her down and you can hear the punches with them punching her in her face, you know, and so um, yeah. we really appreciate you for coming on uh, to the show tonight to tell your story. And this is Return of the Matriarch. Um, tonight, we're going to be um, speaking about the black man's violence against us, his black women. Uh, we have a very special guest on the show tonight, Miss Neat Hodges. Um, she is a survivor of multiple violent attacks by black men, various black men, um, even, be, even being uh, jumped by multiple men at one time. Um, and so, you know, we're grateful to have her today uh, to tell her story. And we're also going to discuss, you know, how once and for all we can put an end to this atrocity, you know, uh, because this is affecting us, affecting melanated females all over the globe. And, it, you know, we have to get it started right here at home first, though, you know, right here at home in Babylon, North America. Uh, we are the light of the world. It's us. So. You know, with further ado, we got the Empress Dominique on the phone. You know, we roll roll together, but we do have Miss Neat Hodges. Welcome so much, Neat. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. How are you? I'm doing great. It's great to be online and talk to everyone and uh, get this started. I'm actually uh, at a different place right now, so I could actually get a good uh, reception. So, uh, well, I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to roll with it. Indeed. <clears throat> well, thank you so much. Um, how are you, Dominique? Thank you so much for joining us as well. How are you feeling this evening? All is well. Indeed. Now, you know, um, we've been, we, we put up a lot of posts on Facebook to just bring awareness to various topics that affects us. Um, so-called Negroes here in North America. And one thing we've been pushing is the awareness of, you know, what black men are doing to black women, how they are just murdering us, how, you know, you just beat us, you know, at will. You just don't have any conscience to it. And so that's how we were able to meet the Empress Neat. And she began telling, you know, her story. So I'm going to just hush and, and let her tell, you know, what have you experienced at the hand of our men here in North America? Well, um, I've experienced different types of abuse or domestic violence, however, you know, you relate to it. Um, I've experienced some, you know, sexual, some actual physical, uh, uh, just some things that, you know, it's like, um, how could this be, you know, people that I love could do something like this, you know? Did I attract it to me or what, you know? And so um, I remember at least one incident. It seems to be kind of traumatizing, and I am still healing from this because it still comes to my mind. I mean, it's something I pretty much now have realized I have actually, you know, been able to tell it, you know? So yes. it's kind of still a little... <coughs> rough for me sometimes to talk about it, but I'm, I'm here to share the story to help someone, you know, help somebody, you know, help myself. Yes, ma'am. So, um, there was a time where I was, I guess, younger and looking for things or love or however you want to say it. Um, I was actually going out on a date to meet someone and the date did not go exactly how I thought it was going to go. Um, actually, um, on the day, uh, the guy that I was originally to meet actually decided to leave me and, um, uh, with his brother at first and his friend. So, uh, I just began to wait on my original date to come back. And as I was waiting, another man started coming, another man started coming. I said, oh, I don't know what's going on here, but, you know, I still stuck around. And before I, you know, I decided to leave, about six or seven guys were there. 
Okay, my date hasn't showed back up. Okay, so one of the guys decided that he was just going to take my car and drive it. I said, well, I made a joke to, you know, lessen the blow, I guess, by joking and saying, you're not on my insurance, so I can't let you drive, you know. And my keys were on the table in front of me. And so um, before I knew it, he came up to me and started slapping on my pockets, I guess, to hear my keys. But they weren't in my pocket, of course. And so as soon as I felt like I could get away, or he turned around, I grabbed my things and I began to run for the door. Two or three guys stopped me before I could get to the door. And uh, so I ran somewhere in the house because they were at the door to get out. Now, I've never been to this home before. Which I say, I was young. So um, after I couldn't get through the door, I got on the phone. I, did, I just I just didn't know what to do. Am I going to have to fight these guys? So I decided to call 911. I didn't know what else to do. Okay, so I tried to call 911 from these people's house. Brother got the phone back, disconnected, said, you can't do that here. And so what can I do? I mean, I got so they attacked me. But um, I, I did what I had to do. I don't care if I spit, grab, whatever. I just, whatever I could do to get away from these guys. And so I ran, I got out from them. You know, I left everything I had, my purse, my keys, my car, everything I had was just there. So I ran to the nearest neighbor's door and I began to pound on the door. I don't know who these people are. I've never been over here. I'm pounding, pounding, pounding on the door. And then I seen the biggest guy that actually asked me for my keys. I kid you not, the guy had to be six five or more. And so uh, as I was pounding on the door, he seen me and got, the, got a big punch out of me. And something inside of me was ready to do whatever I had to do. But as soon as he punched me, it seemed like that's all he wanted to do, or he just he turned around. And, and so finally, about 10 seconds after that, the neighbor opened the door. It was a man. It was a black man. And so um, he actually was helpful. So it was kind of a weird situation, or, you know. So um, he allowed me to use the phone. and. I, he gave me something for my face, you know, I had got hit. Um, I waited for police to get there. Um, as I was coming out, it's odd that uh, um, another domestic violence uh, problem that happened before this one was the guy I was talking to at the time. A lady knew me from that. Of course, it was, might not have been as bad, but it was bad too. So I'm just talking about this one in particular. She asked me if I wanted to call him, but I was getting away from that situation. So it was kind of weird, you know, a weird situation. I said, no, that's okay. The police came, and all my things were found, strewn across the yard, my purse, my phone, everything was still there. And the lady told me that these particular guys, a lot of men were looking for them because they had just gotten out from prison and jail, raping women and all kind of things. They said it could have been worse. And, you know, it's just it's, it's awful. I don't even know what happened to these guys. I just know I got my stuff back. And it's not a city that I lived in. So eventually I came away from that city. I never seen those people again, to my knowledge. And it's just been kind of a different story for me to walk around me and sometimes. They don't know it, but sometimes it's actually hard because I've been jumped, you know. And then I have, sometimes I've had men to say some small remarks to me in this healing. And uh, I think it's important that we all, you know, heal from things. And, oh, I mean, it's, it's been something for me. So, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're live here on Facebook, and I see a couple of the brothers. Uh, he said, well, what kind of men are you dating? Uh, where you been? Abuse. I never, ever hit a woman. Um, thank you so much, um, Noble Shalem. And, you know, what for me personally, how I end up with these deceivers is because they're actually that they're just great deceivers. And so, you know, what I've learned from dealing with men in my past is that ladies, we just cannot jump into anything with these brothers because, you know, yeah, everybody lie. But for me personally, these men they just have this whole totally different story of who they are. 
and then just like with me i just ended a year-long relationship with my ex he began cheating i knew it just the, the female's intuition <clears throat> i couldn't prove it <clears throat> i was never the type of female to go through somebody's phone and research them and all that kind of stuff it just never been that way but once once he went on his $600 cocaine binge and then you know I go back through his uh phone records because his mother is now telling me well you know when you're married to somebody you you stick it out you know you you stick it out for it and I said well when you're married you don't lie and cheat on each other and you don't lie to him and do all this other stuff. And so I had to send him back to his mother because that's her problem, not mine. But when I went back through his phone records, I saw that he had been uh, contacting transgender escorts and even gave me something. So, you know, we are dealing with so much from you brothers and it's and, and you know they say, well, it's the white man did it. How? When we were the ones who taught them what they know. It's time for us to take responsibility. You know, a lot of brothers, you've been commenting on the post that we have today. Well, you know, well, I'll, I'll just beat his ass, or you know, he just need to go to jail, or that's not gonna fix the problem. We are going to have to physically handle this situation. And for the brothers that are out there who you're, you, this is not you, you're not that type of brother, you're going to have to stand up for us. You are the protection. You can no longer turn the other cheek. 64,000 melanated females went missing in North America in 2014. What is going on? A, a teacher was recently murdered by her husband because she decided she wanted a divorce after the abuse. She finally walked away. He came into her classroom and opened fire on her in front of her students, killing one of the students. What is going on with the man? And, <clears throat> you know, Empress, Miss um, Neat, we have been doing some, some research on just really the origin of the hate that our brothers have for us. And we've learned that the first wars were gender wars. And so then, you know, you have to go into... Um, science, or I'm going to say anatomy, because science is consciousness. That's really what science is. And so when we do trace the origin of our existence, we know that life comes through the womb and not a rib. So if that's the case, then females were here first. Every man is born of a woman. And so then we learn, Miss Neat, that, and I don't want to get too, I don't want to go too far into that. And we'll be, bring you on in just a moment, Antonio. Shalem. Um, so with that whole thing of us being here first and knowing the first wars on earth were gender wars. And so from the inception of men being on or coming into existence, you have had a problem with us because we have always been the God. And we always will be. Brothers, you will never be more than that which you come from. And so you've been raised to believe that you're supposed to be over a woman. And so you have this false sense of pride, which is really ego. And then it's like coming up through life. You know, you're living your life and you're dealing with women on a daily and you kind of seeing that you ain't really can't really do what she can do. Like females, we can outthink you. Our brains are bigger. We came first. And I'm not i I'm not gonna go back and forth comparing men and went men to women because you can't compare it. Even your DNA, your DNA is XY. You're missing a leg. We're XX. Men are a mutation of females. All life begins female in the womb. And so there are it's just so much truth that we have to deal with to really bring 
um, an understanding because once we get an understanding, then we can begin to heal. But it's just so much confusion. And these brothers, you have a false sense of self. Everything that we've been taught is a lie. It's a lie. You know, even the Native American tribes, which we are the natives, we're not slaves from Africa. We've always been here. They were matriarchal. The females were leading, the men were protect. It's how we were designed. We were, we were designed to run the world, females, the melanated women. And brothers, you were designed to protect and to build. And so now you want to rule over us. That's a curse. Genesis 3 and 15 tells you that. It's a curse for a man to rule over a woman. And so, ladies, because we've been deceived through time, through religion, by men, we have to stand up now and take our rightful places. It's just too much truth in the earth for us to continue, you know, like the fake testament says, turning the other cheek, turning a blind eye. Scripture says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And we pose the question, how many females have been physically in fights with men? And a lot of females have. And that's just unacceptable, brothers. Why are you beating on us? Why are, are you murdering us? A, another thing we found out from our research is circumcision. It has a lot to do with the disconnect in male-female relationships. It's such a brutal act to put a baby boy through. Here, this baby's been nourished all this time. The baby's born. Now it's in the mother's arm and out of nowhere is ripped out of the mother's arm and taken to a room, mutilated. Do you know that they use your baby's foreskin for cosmetics? Did you know that, sisters? You know, what a slap in the face, right? And we know how much money the cosmetic industry makes at the cost of your relationship with your sons. And so your relationship is broken with your sons. And so every relationship that comes after you will be broken with that man. And Empress, it's going to start with us. And it's going to start with us not only speaking about it, but taking a stand. Uh -huh. I'm listening. You have any comments, Dominique? Well, ma'am, I don't. Well, ma'am, I don't. Well, ma How about you, brothers and sisters? You know, we got... Brothers and sisters on the line, Shalam, welcome to the show. This is a very serious topic. You know, and, and <clears throat> we have to know, you know, this earth is not ran by the laws of Moses. It's ran by the, the, the laws of nature, the universal laws of nature. And so we know what you reap or what you sow, you're going to reap. And yeah, brothers, it's, it's, it, there are some good brothers out there. But have you ever heard of guilt by association? You're just standing by doing nothing. No, no one can make anybody do anything. But now is the time for us to come together and we got to figure this thing out. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're not going to continue letting y'all put y'all hands on us. And after a while, it's going to be out of anybody's hands. It's going to be completely in our hands. And so once we make the decision to eradicate all of the rebels, it ain't going to be no, oh, give me another chance. I can get it right. We're not playing. So I'm sounding the alarm. I'm calling for all of our brothers and sisters. <clears throat> Let's come together. This is beyond Facebook, beyond YouTube. We have to literally start putting together a plan of action to deal with this problem. This is a big country. I've toured this country 
a, quite a few times and driven all over North America. And it's a big country. We have a lot of work to do. Empress, and I don't want to, you know, keep uh, having you relive, you know, the things that you have been through, <clears throat> but you told me today, and I took it very serious, you said, <clears throat> you know, something has to happen because if it don't, I feel like I'm going to be murdered by one of these men. And no woman... <clears throat> should feel that way no no female should feel that way that we got to watch our back you know we can't even be casual with a brother because he just crazy as hell brothers you have a lot of issues that you have to deal with and so as Shah said really it's time for a separation What's the point in being in these relationships and you're going nowhere for convenience? Why? At the end of the day, even you, brother, you deserve the best. You're your own worst enemy. Always have been. We've always been our own worst enemies. So we need to be working on us, on me. This is love me moving. You need to be working on yourself. Brothers, y'all know y'all have issues. And I'm not saying we're perfect. Because there are some females that are abusive. I've been in relationships with females too. So I know. I've been abused by men and women. It's out there. But our brothers, you're murdering us. And it's out of control. The, it, the statistic says that Melanated females, black females in North America are 50% more likely to be beat or murdered by their spouse or whoever they're in a relationship with. Y'all just don't have no respect for us. No love. And so, um. go ahead, Empress. Oh, I like to say something because something was inside of me to say. Um, a lot of times when I say these stories, a lot of times I get these replies saying that, you know, maybe I did something wrong, you know, or maybe I shouldn't have been talking to this brother or I should pick better or something like that. Um, so when I'm talking to another male or man, I'm going say man, I'm talking to a brother, and I might tell him this story. And they say that. Well, how do you expect for me to respond to that? I mean, where is the actual, like you said, stand up? Because I've heard these replies way more than the response, let's do something about this instead of, you know, you need to pick better or you're in the wrong place. I mean, I'm going, it seems like I'm always in the wrong place when I say this. I mean, I don't want to, you know, say the, the wrong thing I'm trying not to say, but... Uh, no, you just have to be completely... I keep on getting these, I get these responses back as if it's me, you know. I thought it was me for a long time. You know, I said, well, I'm, I'm picking, you know, I'm picking the wrong people. I'm not around the right place, you know. It's got to be me, you know. I've, I've gone made myself mad before because I feel like it was always me. And so I kept checking myself. It's not always me, you know? So uh, just recently, um, I've had a man to say something to me. I didn't provoke this man to say anything to me, you know, the way he did. You know, he felt like it was okay to call me a dick-sucking hoe or a stupid idiot bitch or whatever they want to say. And I feel like if a man hears another man saying that, it should be something done. There was other men around. Now, don't get me wrong, I've had men to stand up for me. But why, like you said earlier, do you turn a side eye or you turn, you don't get involved? Why not get involved? Because this continues to keep going and keep going until somebody says something. Now, if I get hot enough, I'm going to follow up myself. 
And I, I, I just been in these situations to where I just rather not because I know how they can end up. You see what I'm saying? I'd rather walk away. But this guy continues to do it to me, the next person. And it's not cool. It's not cool to be little. Maybe you don't be abused by hitting a woman. Maybe your abuse as a man is by being derogatory or be little. There's still abuse. Indeed. You see what I'm saying? That, that, that's something that should be talked about also with the physical and the sexual about the derogatory. The verbal. The belittling, the uh, talking <laughs> up under clothes. You know, just things like that. Right. And, yeah. the, and it's the religious men. These Hebrew Israelites are the worst. You know, y'all quit to call a female out her name. But this is what Asha is doing for y'all. The Y chromosome is dying out. Men are not being produced like that anymore. I told you in the beginning it was only females. It's not going to be very many men left around when it's all said and done. So, you know, this is a warning. That's what it is. And I would suggest that you take heed, brothers, and do your part. You know, being hard is not, you know, hustling drugs in the street or, you know, beating on women or how many hoes. You, that ain't what being, I mean, that's nothing. How are you protecting your community and assuring a future for you? We are your reflection, right? It's no separation at the end of the day. So all of that, you know, just thinking about yourself and all, yeah, this is the Love Me movement and you definitely want to make sure you're doing what you got to do for yourself. But what about your people? Because can't not, no one person do this. It's going to take us as a collective. Coming together, everything that we want to do, it's going to take us coming together to do it. And there are so many things that we have to do. We got to get this earth in, in order. Nobody is coming to save us. And so that's another excuse. And I see so many of you brothers, you believe in Jesus. Jesus is not coming to do your job. He ain't coming to save us. I'm sorry to tell you that. Asha is not into blood sacrifices of human beings. Nobody can die for nobody else. We ain't even supposed to be eating meat. And you want me to believe that somebody died for my sins. We have to, it's time to elevate now. Not only are we our own worst enemies, but we got real enemies out there. That want to wipe us off the face of the earth. And here we can't even get it right amongst ourselves. Why? What is the purpose for the hate and the disrespect? Where has it gotten us? Where? Nowhere. We have gotten nowhere. And, and, and it's, been a it's been a long ass time. And we have gotten nowhere. These other nations, they run in circles around us. We have the most economical power in North America. And we just being pimped out. Everybody eating off of us. And they eating good. I work for them every day. So I see the life that they live. You have anything, Empress? I think we should know. I think we should know that we can do whatever we put our minds to do together as a unit. I mean, do we really want, you know, to step it up is the question I feel that needs to be answered. Or is it just okay just to barely get by or, you know, just live this, you know, mediocre life, you know, look, I'm glad, looking glamorous, but really deep down, you know, there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of suffering going on. You know, we're really ready to step up, you know, and actually be this, you know, love and peace that we desire deep down. Do we, do, do we really desire this? 
I know I do. Indeed. We deserve the best. We've been through enough, man. And now, you know, the enemy, they have our hands off of us, but they, they got our mind. All we care about is this illusion that they've given us. So, you know, we talk about what are we going to do? What's the next step to take? How, how are we going to come together? We have a retreat. It's a spiritual retreat that we have set up uh, July 1st through the 7th in Columbus, Georgia. That's in about three, four more weeks. This is a state of emergency for Negroes in North America. It's an urgency for us to come together. Nature is going to be very vital to us. We have to get back to nature. We got to. So we have set up this retreat. It's a week-long camp out. We're going to be staying on some um, tribal land, Melanated Empress, Chief Betty. She has the land and she's ready to receive her people. And we need to go to that land and we need to come together and we need to get away from this world. We need to get, we need to exit the matrix for a week and come together in nature so we can hear from our maker and so that we can be healed because the herbs of the land is for the healing of the nations anyway. So our healing comes from nature. So what better place to be in to set this whole thing up? Because brothers, you're, you're not going to be able to continue doing this to us. It is our right, melanated females, specifically in North America, to run the world. And a shot is putting us back on our throne. So I said like this, either you're going to get down or you're going to lay down. Nothing is going to stop the return of the matriarch or the return of the natural order of things. Nothing is going to stop it. Now's the time. It's written. So we want to invite you, our brothers and sisters. I, all we are asking is that each family give the Empress Chief $100 for the week. She's building, working on different uh, projects on the property so that she can have places for people to come and stay. Different cabins and she got all kind of stuff. that she. So $100 a family is nothing. Invest in yourself. Do what you need to do to save yourself. Nobody is coming to save us. And it's going to be a lot of us that ain't going to make it. And this is not no religious talk. This ain't no, you know, no, this ain't that. Like seriously, the enemies, our enemy, they, they've already been doing a good number on us. They got the FEMA camps ready to go. They got the Negroes divided. It's an easy takedown. But I refuse. I refuse to go down with Babylon. I ain't going down. And it's going to be a few of us that will not go down either. So I just want to encourage our brothers and sisters. You know, this is a very serious topic. And we don't have to sit here and, and give all of these examples because we've all seen it. Some of us have been the abuser. Some have been the abusee. Let's meet up in Georgia. July 1st through the 7th, we'll be in Columbus, Georgia for the week on the tribal land, putting together plans of action so that we can start executing judgment in the earth ourselves. Because ain't nobody coming to save us. We are the saviors. Dominique, you have anything you'd like to add? Brothers and sisters, do you have anything you'd like to add? You know, we in this together. We're in it together. Shalam Taz, welcome. You have anything you'd like to say, Empress? Any other comments? You know, any anything else you'd like for our brothers and sisters to know? Okay, um, I'd like to... Thank you for um, inviting me on to be your special guest on this great 
you know, gathering here. Indeed. And um, I really enjoy, you know, talking amongst, you know, my brothers and sisters, my loves. I enjoy, you know, sharing ideas and sharing knowledge and just information where we can grow and build together. And um, I really like what you said about, you know, taking action and uh, going to meet in Georgia. Not sure exactly the location, but that sounds like a great idea, you know. Yes. And to actually talk to people face to face, you know, I I would really like to do that. I'm not sure if I'll be able to or not, but I'd like to do that. And I encourage other people to do it if they can do it. I think that's a great idea. Indeed it is. We got to get back to nature. It's going to be in Columbus, Georgia. You know, it'll be, we're going to be back in nature. That's that's one thing that has weakened us is we have been taken away from our natural habitat. We were not created to be inside of drywall and brick and all of that. We got to get back to nature. We got to get back in tune with nature and, and because the laws of nature is what run this world and this existence. And we have to set it back in order. This is the reset. And you already know when a new when a new kingdom is being raised up, all hell is going to break loose. It's already started. Brothers, you are being judged. This is why the police can walk up to you and shoot you in the head. So we have to ask, what kind of brother was it? You know what? Because everybody get what they deserve. So what, why, why are our brothers dying the way they are? We have to ask these questions. And so we look at their track record as a whole. No, brother, it may not be you. No, brother, it may not be you. But you are a brother, and so you're guilty by association because it's going on, and you're doing nothing about it. What are you going to do? You say you the man, it's time to be the man. We don't need you on Facebook going back and forth with us all day. You need to be in the streets gathering the brothers. Brothers. Yeah, what you sitting on your phone all day for? It's work to do. Asha said, emotions is not going to fix this. She said, you know, your, your emotions is not going to fix this problem. So ain't no sense in me, you know, just getting all turned up. For what? I'm not going to do that to myself. But I know what it is. And what it is, is we either going to get it right or we finna start seeing a lot more demise among our brothers. We got to clean up. We got to clean the earth up. So everybody who want to stay dirty and that's the kind of life you want to live. You just want to be a whatever you want to call it. Then you got to go. We want better. And we cannot be unequally yoked with people who just want to, you know, do what thou wilt. No, it's time for righteousness. And I'm not talking about no, you know, holy. I ain't talking about all that. I'm talking about doing things decent in order and real justice in the earth again. That's what time it is. And people being held accountable. No more pointing the other finger, talking about what the white man did and how you all brainwashed. You are making these decisions on your own. You made that decision to put your hands on her. So now, oh, you know. Am I right, Empress? We can, we can, you know, and so this is what the brothers, they said, well, the white man says this part. I'm just very passionate about, this is very important. This is like very important. This is the most important thing that we're facing right now. These people kidnapping us. They finding young girls with their organs missing. How in the hell are they kidnapping us? 
Where are the men? Where is the protection? Jesus ain't coming back. Nobody is coming back for us. We have to save ourselves. <clears throat> Empress, you have any, any other comments? Um, I did want to say something about what you were talking about, how they want to blame the white man or something like that, and other system. Well, us not being together to unify makes it easier for the system to do whatever it's going to do. You know, I, as long as we're torn apart, it just makes it that much easier for the so-called system that they don't like. Do they not see that? And not only that, but they don't like it, but many of them are up under the women who are receiving the benefits. So you benefit too. But you don't like it. Evidently you do. What are you doing to help the situation? What are you doing to help your baby mama? It's, just, it's a lot. It's a lot that has to get done. All that laying up, brothers. Ain't no more laying up. You ain't got no time to be laying up. It's work to do. It's time to get in these streets and get this work done. Talk is cheap. We can sit here all day. It's time for action. We got the power. We got the power. That's why the CIA and the FBI and DARPA, they make all these ex extravagant weapons. We are the superheroes. They can't stop us. We stopping ourselves, man. Go ahead, Empress. I'm disagreeing with you. I'm listening to you. It's the truth. They can't stop us. Who you think they're making those weapons to fight against? They know that ain't no space in the sky. We can't even get out of this realm. It's a glass ceiling above us. We're surrounded by an ice wall. Ain't, we're not on a globe. The earth is not spinning. These people know it's other land masses beyond this land mass. They've been playing us all along. We got to get into the note because the knowledge is the power. We can't be running around here talking about what we believe no more. No, no, I know for a matter of fact, this is what it is. It's time. We the gods, right? <laughs> well, we dying like men. For what? No, no more excuses, brothers and sisters. No more excuses. And the same goes for the females. That you doing this to these brothers. Because there have been some brothers, you know, they I, I done been beat on. And it's true. I've witnessed females that just out of control too. And so you will be eradicated as well. We're not dealing with all that. We want peace. That's what the covenant always was and that's what it still is. Peace. We just want some peace. We just want to live in peace. That's it. So, I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, please join us in Columbus, Georgia. It's going to be an amazing experience. Our maker... Our maker dwells in nature. Her name is Asha. She is wisdom. Her name is spelled the same backwards. I'm not here to feed that to you. I'm not trying to shove her down your throat. I just want you to know why we chose nature to be the meeting ground for something as important as this. That's our natural habitat. It's where we belong. We got to go back and see mama. And get some healing. For each of you brothers and sisters who do come. I can guarantee you it will change your life. When was the last time you spent time outside? Connected with something that's not made with the hands of man. 
When was the last time you've been in nature? This is where your maker dwells. This is where she lives. We got to we got to get out. We got to get out out of these boxes straight up. We need to be free. We're, we're spirits first. We're supposed to be free. Not all caged up. Meet us in Columbus, Georgia, July 1st through the 7th. Dominique, can you put a um, put the um, Mimi or the flyer in the comments for the brothers and sisters so they'll have the information um, and message us, you know, hit us up like we are here. We are here. We got your back. You want to do what's right? We the sisters to hook up with, baby, because we're going to do what's right and we're going to see it through. We didn't come back to Babylon, North America to just sit around and watch our people perish. No way. That's not why we came back here. We have specific instructions on what to do and we're going to carry them out. The first order of business is our people coming together, brothers and sisters, keeping our hands off of one another and really learning how to operate in a hob, love, real love again. Real concern and compassion for one another and being a community and caring about one another and not just saying, well, oh, I don't know them, so she ain't got nothing to do with it. No, we can't do that anymore. Why do you think the other nations are excelling and they are being prosperous? Because they're working the laws, the principles. They know togetherness is where it's at. And so they're doing great as a people, for the most part, especially the people that are not Negro, that are in North America, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Jamaicans, right? The Haitians, don't they stick together? And they're the same color we are. Come on, y'all. We the best. Everybody want to be us. Everybody want to be us. They mock Negroes in North America. They ain't mocking the Jamaicans. They ain't mocking the Haitians or aspiring to be or copying. No. All lies is on us because they know who we are. We are that sleeping giant. That's who we are. And it's time to wake up. Now's the time. So if you ladies have any last words you'd like to say, you know, brothers and sisters, do you have any comments, you know, any suggestions, please. Dominique? Uh, well, it would be nice to have uh, one of the brothers come forth and, you know, I guess see from their side of being an abuser. Uh, because at the end of the day, you know, it's about growing and it's helping us to understand them more, I guess. Indeed. <clears throat> we have any brothers that's watching and you're ready to tell your side as to, you know, what what did the female do to provoke you? To put, to put your hands on her? You know, what was going on in your mind? Like, how did it get to that point? You know, this is an open forum. Like uh, Dominique said, it's about growing. It's about growth and, you know, moving forward. Because we all have fallen short at some particular time in our life. So nobody's perfect on this earth. But that's what we're striving towards is perfection, right? That's what peace is. And it's attainable. We have the willpower to do what we want to do. We can make, we can do whatever we want to do. But we have to exhibit self-control. We have to re retrain ourselves again. Everybody, we're all in the same boat. Nobody is saved yet. We're saving ourselves. It's a daily thing. It's not just a one-time thing. Every day. We have to encourage ourselves to do the right thing. It's so easy to do the wrong thing. But we should want the best for ourselves. You should, a hob, you should love yourself enough to say, no, I deserve the best. And if somebody is making me that angry 
to the point to where I got to put my hands on them and end up in jail or end up anything, I don't need to be there. Having self-control like that. Like, it don't have to get to, to murdering your mothers, your daughters. It, it, it just doesn't make any sense. That's not who we are. We're, we're not that people. No one is... Um, Come on yet. Uh, Sister Neat, did you have anything that you'd like to, um, you know, any last words that you'd like to say to our people? You know, anything that's on your heart? Um, well, at this time, I'm, I'm just, uh, again, great to, glad to be on here and I'm ready to do what we need to do. Indeed. So, you know, enough talking about it. Let's be about it, brothers and sisters. Uh, July 1st through the 7th, we will be in Columbus, Georgia. So please message myself, Dominique. We're tagged in the video. Um, even Sister Neat, you can hit her up. You know, I mean, we in this together. So, you know, let's do what we got to do as a people to make things right between one another so that we can move forward and assume our throne. Ain't y'all tired of living like peasants? I know I am. <laughs> I know I am. But we're not going to be given this earth in the condition that we're in. We got to prove ourselves again. It's only righteous, right? Look at us. We have fallen. Very, 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 very low on the totem pole. So we got a lot of work to do to get back to the top. It's attainable. We can do it together. That's the only way it's going to happen. You know, a family divided cannot stand. You know the principle. It's the principle. So with that, we're going to end the show. We're going to be on... Um, in another day or two and we're going to keep pushing this this issue you know we need more brothers and sisters to step forward because we're spread out we need we need to know who you are the ones that are ready to move forward and do your part all right so shalam shalam means peace in hebrew um ahab ahab means love in hebrew because you know love spelled backwards is evil Live spelled backwards. It's evil. So, you know, we have to be careful. It's just so much that we got to unlearn. It's so much, brothers and sisters. But it's going to start with us coming together. No matter what you believe, that throw all that out the door. It's time for unity right now. So we can put our beliefs to the side, all of that. Let's come together first and work out our personal issues. What's going on inside of you? That got you, you know, what, what is this, this, this ugly stuff going on inside of you that is, I'm seeing it on the outside. Let's fix ourselves so that we can be the gods that we were made to be. Okay. Shalom. Ahab.